everyone and welcome back. In today's video I'm going to be showing five different ways that you can use fine liners in your sketchbooks and this is a drawing slash colouring ideas sort of video. You can use whatever fine liners that you have on hand, whatever brand you like. I'm using this set of 72 from Arteza and Arteza very generously supplied me with these supplies to use in this video. These, this set of 72 fine liners is very nice. The ink is alcohol um, marker proof so you can use your Copics or Pro markers with them. Some of the colours to be honest are very similar um, but, and they're not waterproof but we're going to use uh, the water-based nature of these pens to our advantage a bit later on. So you can use whatever fine liners um, you have to do this tutorial and I've just grabbed my sketchbook and I'm now going to get go ahead and show you the different ideas that I've come up with. I just want to quickly say however that I have another tutorial on my channel it's called how to colour with fine liners and in that I show you a kind of a squiggle style of colouring. I'm not repeating that technique exactly in this video so I'll link that video in the iCards if you'd like to see that. The other thing that I'm not going to be showing you guys in this video is um, drawing a mandala with the fine liners. Now I know um, the fine liners are excellent for drawing for, for doing that um, but I felt like that kind of deserved a video tutorial all, all on its own so I will get to doing that at some point in the future but I just wanted to let you know that that's not included in um, the um, ideas today. So for this first idea you want to go ahead pick four different colours. I've picked aqua a kind of aqua turquoise green, a pink, a purple and a blue and you want to just draw angular lines at different angles on your piece of paper and I've drawn four, four lines in each colour and then I'm going in and filling in the little boxes and I'm trying to keep my the lines for each of the colours in the same direction as the first line that I put down. So for instance um, if the pink line is going in one way I draw all the little lines in the same direction but if then the next the purple line is going in a different direction I draw all the the filler lines in the same way. It's a bit hard to describe but I think you can see quite clearly what I'm doing on camera and then once I filled it in with all those lines I'm now going in and I'm kind of decorating inside the lines. Now this particular um, this particular drawing took a long time to make but it's really simple all you need is a ruler and you're just drawing lines and then you're just filling in the lines and I'm using a variety of little shapes, um, little triangles, little squiggles just to decorate each of the lines, e each of the sections and I'm using a slightly different technique, a little a slightly different technique for each of the colours. So the purple has triangles, the pink has kind of squiggles, the blue has squares and the green, the turquoise colour has sort of round arches almost. It, and then I'm also going in and I'm adding some circles and some dots and you can embellish this as much as you want. I did find however that my eyes went, were going a little bit funny towards the end when I was staring at this for um, it took me about 45 minutes to make this but it's so simple and you can get a really complicated look really simply all you need is a ruler and just start marking off sections of your page. So for this next idea I'm, I'm drawing out a simple donut shape with my um, pink pencil here and the idea with this is to draw out a recognizable or quite a simple shape it could be a flower a piece of food you could draw an animal or a person or an object something that's quite recognizable outline it in black and then we're going to pattern and put lots of little tiny details with different colors in the inside now if any of you guys have seen my squiggle style coloring tutorial that I did with the fine liners I did that um, several months ago um, but if any of you have seen that then this particular technique is a similar sort of idea but instead of just using squiggles to colour in we're actually going to use sort of different pattern designs using the fine liners and it is quite important with this technique that you use a quite a recognisable shape for your object because the colouring style is very abstract you want to use a recognisable shape and then you also want to use colours that are close to what they would be in real life even though this donut is in, is in, no, way, is in, is in no way realistic I am using a brown colour to colour in the parts of the baked and I am I'm going to be using a pink for the icing just so that when people look at it they kind of you know they can recognise what it is and so what I'm doing is I'm going ahead and I'm filling in all the places where you'd see the baked part of the donut with these tiny little brown swirls and I'm doing swirls for the baked part and I've done that all over and then 
I'm going in and I'm going to pattern in the pink icing and I've chosen a different, so instead of doing swirls again here, I'm varying the little shapes that I'm making. So here I'm doing, it almost, it, you could say it's like they're like little flower petals, little half circles. They also look to me a little bit like um, scales like you'd get on a fish or a mermaid's tail sometimes. You know when you draw a mermaid's tail you can often, you often see people drawing these tiny little uh, scales like that. And I'm just going in and I'm filling in all the pink areas with this particular style and you can use any little you can make any sort of pattern you want if you prefer to put lines or crosses you know however you want but you kind of keep keep a limited color palette keep your um, object recognizable and then you can doodle inside and, cre and create some really fun effects that way so that's that technique and now we're going to try something um, different and I've swapped sketchbooks here because my other sketchbook is not a is not a mixed media paper and I'm, I'm going to be using a water brush here. So what I'm doing is I'm drawing out a quick sketch of a girl with some flowers in her hair and you can of course sketch whatever you like. I have some tutorials on my channel about how to uh, sketch eyes, eyes, noses and lips and faces so you can, if you want to learn more about how I actually draw a face then you can go and look at those tutorials. And then the next thing you want to do after you've got your sketch in or if you, you don't need to sketch at all if you're happy to just go in with the fine liners um, then you want to go ahead and you want to outline it. Now the fine liners, of course, can just be used for outlining. So you can just outline your piece and colour it with um, markers or with pencils and or just leave it plain. But one of the things that I like to do is I like to sketch with the coloured fine liners. And especially if I'm doing thumbnails or doing um, sketching some ideas for a bigger piece. So for instance, this piece that I've sketched out here, I would probably like to turn it into a Copic uh, piece or make it much larger or do a big watercolour painting with it. So one of the things that I quite like to do when I'm sketching is to take a water brush and to liquefy the fine liners because the fine liners are a water-based pen so you can move the ink around and so instead of getting all those very harsh lines I can almost turn this into not into a kind of watercolory looking um, sketch or into a, into a painting and I really love doing this with the fine liners um, especially in my mixed media in my mixed media sketchbook and I, I'm just going in with the water brush and I'm just kind of liquefying I'm not trying to spread the lines everywhere I'm just kind of going over my lines and just kind of placing a little bit of water over them so they sort of bleed and it gives this really nice effect and you can also go over and add more layers you can just scribble some color directly onto the onto the face or onto the you can add rosier cheeks as, as you can see and then you can just keep on liquefying it and then once it's dry I can go in and I can add more details with the fine liners and add some I'm adding details into the petals I've added some little sprigs of berries and things it's just a really fun technique and I think it's really really pretty as well and it's a nice way of just using your fine liners in a different way so if you're used to doing a lot of sketching and you want to make your sketches look a little bit more interesting you can go ahead and just outline things with the fine liners and then just use a water brush to just drag the color out a little bit and once it's dry you can go on top and add more details as I am here with the hair so I think this is a really fun idea and it may not be something that you've thought about doing before the fine most fine liners are um, water based and um, the Copic multi liners won't work for this technique because those are meant to be waterproof but any water based fine, fine liners will work well for that. So this next technique is to draw an object or a number or a letter in the middle of your page and then to leave that the middle of that object letter or number blank and then fill the rest of the page with doodles, objects or flowers or swirls and just fill the rest of the page up so that your left, the only blank spaces in the page left are the, your, the inside of your letter number or object. And I think that this technique would look would work really well um, as a gift so if you had a birthday or um, you wanted to give someone a gift you could write the um, their first the, the letter the first letter of their name or perhaps their initials on a big piece of paper and I think this would look really cool if you did it on a really big piece of Bristol board or something um, I would do it on an A4 piece of paper or um, perhaps like a 9 by 12 piece of paper I think that would look really cool as a poster um, but what you can do is you can draw their initial draw their initials draw their um, um, the first letter of their name and then doodle all around it and 
just so you guys know, each of these pages in this uh, video have taken me about half an hour to complete, um, but I think if I was doing a gift I would obviously spend a lot longer on it and be a little bit more careful, but I think it would make a, because it's so easily customisable and all you need is a piece of paper and a load of fine, fine liners, and I think it would make a really nice gift. But anyway, so what you want to do is you want to just put whatever uh, shapes, I'm using flowers, leaves, hearts, little swirls, and I'm using, I'm using uh, multiple colours. You could do the whole thing in black and white if you wanted. You could go ahead and colour in the doodles after you'd outlined them all with some pencils or some markers. Or if you did it on watercolour paper, you could use that watercolouring technique a little bit to sort of just um, bleed some of the colours into each other. You could do a lot, but I think this is a really nice page. And um, yeah, you could even uh, draw, you could just fill it with tiny little swells. If you don't really fancy drawing flowers or drawing anything, you could use the ruler technique that we, we did earlier with the little boxes, or you could just draw squiggles and swells all around the page. I would advise if you're using multiple colours to stick to maybe four or five different colours, um, not more than that, because I think limited colour palettes make things uh, look a bit more cohesive. But there you go, you just rub out the pencil lines and... Um, I think it looks really cool. So for the last page I'm drawing out a pattern and you could go ahead and do pencil lines and uh, uh, make under sketches for this. Now I'm just going ahead and going straight in with the fine liners to draw out my objects so the lines aren't 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 particularly straight all the time um, but you'll see um, when I do when I do the colouring technique on this it doesn't really matter if the lines are wonky um, because the colouring style is very loose and abstracted anyway. So what I've done is I've chosen one I chose one object and then I drew it in most of the time I'm drawing each object out five times but with the very first with the Copic markers that I drew I, I seem to have drawn them six times but normally when I'm drawing these sorts of patterns I take one object I scatter it throughout the page and I draw it uh, five times then I take the next object I scatter it throughout the page and draw that five times and that way I can keep it looking co consistent and uh, that way I have an even number of all the objects and then once I've drawn them all out I've drawn I, I'm just kind of very roughly colouring them colouring them in and this is an excellent um, this is excellent way to do some prep work so for instance if I was going to draw this pattern up on the computer in Photoshop or I was working on um, doing some colour studies or some thumbnail studies this is how I colour this is how I would lay out a piece for working on at a later date or just random doodling and this is this kind of just very uh, simple kind of scribble style of colouring is exactly how I do thumbnails and I think that's a very fun little um, exercise that you can do if you're if you're bored one day or you want to sketch out a thumbnail thumb, um, Fine liners are just really fun to have around. They're great for writing and for outlining, but you can also do some different fun colouring ideas with them as well. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you let, leave me a comment down below and let me know which one of the pages that you liked best. And I hope this gave you some ideas for ways that you can use fine liners in your sketchbooks. So have a wonderful day, everyone, and I will see you next time.